Hello, hello. Good morning. Welcome back. I'm Claire. This is Purple Poppy. Whilst I was trying to have a sort out and reorganise some of the chaos, which is otherwise known as my craft area, I came across these three little booklets. Now, these are little tiny booklets that I made a long time ago that could be slotted into a pocket in a journal. And as you can see, they've got all sorts of different bits and pieces on them. And knowing me, they were made on a day just like today where I was, well, contemplating my navel about where to go next, having just finished a project. And was trying to tidy up so that once I start, I start fresh. And I thought, you know what, this is a great way again of using up scraps and book pages and things like that. So I'm going to make a bunch of these. I'm going to put them more organised in my ready to go box. Stand them up there. Um, <clears throat> ready for a project that's up and coming. So I thought the obligatory book pages. That one's being used as a glue page, but I don't think that's going to matter. I've bought coffee dyed papers. I've bought a scanned image of some postcards that I've got. I've got another little book page there. I've got some music paper. I've got some photos. You all know how I am with photos. I don't know what this is or where it came from. It looks like a mini image of a ledger. I've got some mini bingo cards there. So we've got lots of bits and pieces. And then I've brought along this print that I put into the Facebook group this morning. Uh, now, I must admit, I've got three of them because I did the blue, I did this greeny grey, and then I did a slightly different blue one. So I've got three of them. But the reason I've brought these along is because I think these are going to make grey, like, main back covers. And obviously I've got ink there and glue and scissors and blah de blah So the first thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take my book pages because what I did with these was I folded the book page in half that way. Okay, you can see I folded it in half that way. That was obviously a slightly smaller book. And then I have just literally folded it over like so now if you've got very thin pages you will want to glue the two halves together but bearing in mind i'm going to glue to the inside and the outside if you've got a fairly reasonable strength paper you are not going to need to have both which is why i've ripped it in half okay and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to rip this just double check yeah, I'm going to rip this basically in half, like so. I'm going to pull off the white edges. I don't know what I would ever do if I got a borderless printer and there was no white edges to rip off. Feels like an obligatory part of the process. Um, obviously you can do this with any background papers, which is why I bought a choice along. But I just thought as I'd put it into the group this morning, it would make sense to use this page. So, let's give it a little bit of edge, like so. Okay. So we'll trim it down about there. That's just normal copy of paper. That's all that I've got in my machine at the moment. So it's not printing particularly thick or colourful or anything like that. It's just normal copy paper. See now I wasn't concentrating what I was doing there. Was I? So let's just 
try and straighten that up a little bit. Like so. Get rid of that little bit. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to use a different book page. And the reason I'm doing that is this particular book, oh, there's Bo, Morning Bo, has got really nice brown corners. So I want to keep that to use. And I'm going to use this rubbishy one to glue an ink on. Okay. So I've got a traditional dobber this morning because I can't find my... Um, my brush and I really don't like these I can't get on with these do you all love these I, I really struggle and then I do that and it ends up with score lines in and it all falls apart and it just oh I don't like them I will have to you see this is what happens you start tidying up and you lose things I know you know me as the person that's always losing stuff right let's get some glue on here I should cover that up really, shouldn't I? I don't want it drying out. Right, we get some glue on here. First of all. Okay. Then we get this positioned on here. Now remember you want a little bit of the cream at the top at the sides and at the bottom it's still quite snowy here people are venturing out um, and like you can hear it crunching underfoot okay so that's that piece then I'm just going to take some coffee dyed Paper. I'm going to use this lined one, I think, and that wants to come. Let's move that so you can see what I'm doing. That wants to just here about there. And obviously, you can make these as fancy or as simple as you want to because you can add buttons and lace and ribbon and things. Um, to obviously bling them up. Um, sorry, I've just realised because it's lined, I can see that that's not very straight. Never mind. Um, and bling them up as much as you want to. I will probably only do the bases and then perhaps bling them up when I know better where I'm going to use them. So then you've got, as it were, half the job done. And it obviously works a lot quicker when you're trying to get a project together. I don't know why I'm checking, because lines are the same, upside down, as they are, and the right way. But there you go. Force of habit. So then just press that down, as we always do. <clears throat> Find, find your centre, bend that over so that we find our midway point like so. Use my phone folder just to firm that down. So there you go. It's the front and I love that rough edge there's the middle for journaling on and there's the back simple okay really really simple but obviously we can go on and on and we can do lots of different ones so this one here I'm going to use the other piece of this blue Stand him up there for a minute, out of the way. And I'm just going to make a little back of these. 
so not much to tell you really um, obviously not really going anywhere so no exciting events to report but keeping nice and warm indoors nice and busy spending time with you lovely people so that's all good and then you see that one will go on there like so and then we'll just pull that off down there like that Um, yeah, that's that one. That's okay. Do, 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 do. And then obviously these bits that I'm pulling off, I will use in a minute on other ones. So let's just. Oh, not that one. That's the one I want to use. I bet someone was shouting at me, telling me that, weren't they? A little bit of ink on these. Obviously, don't want to ink it, don't ink it. Nice and easy, not a problem. Just whatever takes your fancy. And then we glue it up. And we will get it stuck down. Now, as you can see, by the fact that I've got this sheet that I've added to the group for people to print and use, I have been waving my computer and making digital prints. They are far from what I'd call perfect at this moment in time. They need a lot more sort of depth and feeling to them and I'm sure in time I will get there but at the moment I'm more than happy to be able to get several items overlaid on the one page and <clears throat> change colours and things so if it's something you want to have a play with I found that probably the easiest and while you're learning cheapest way to do it is to go over to pixel scraper or scrapper um, and just google it it'll come up it's a big site and if you register with them there is a professional um, registration that you can pay for um, and obviously you can buy various things but there's also a free one and if you register you can download up to five I'm going to call them elements every time you log in so five elements a day basically so that enables you to obviously do things like this um, and you can choose to have them with a transparent background so obviously it just looks like the stitching or you can choose you know ones that have got a flat background etc um yeah and i've just been having a little play and getting familiar with that as i say far from an expert lots of continued learning needed but we're getting there um, a few days ago I couldn't like add two or three elements together let alone create something that I felt was usable or even worthy of sharing for free you know so quite pleased with that feels like a bit of an achievement and I think at the moment it's really important keep your chin up and relish the goods just suck up that good 
we're not having any bad don't believe in it okay um i'm going to use one of these little bingo cards to lay on top of that cheese cloth so let's just rip that off little tiny one because it's quite a small book look we don't want to overpower it too much get all those bits over there get some glue on that let's get that on top of that bit of cheesecloth bit of added interest there and then where is the music paper. Just two sets of scores there. Okay. No. bit there like so there you go and then if I look at my lace straw pull up my lace See if we can find a bit of something a blue. It's only a little booklet, so it's not going to take very much at all. Part of the reason I started doing this tidy up which is where I found these booklets is because I've bought some new drawers now I can't speak for other places but here in the UK um, you go to places like Wilco's or um, Poundland or something like that it's very easy to get these plastic drawer chests uh, done on places like that and they're generally three or four drawers high and they're about 12 inches square 13 inches square there you go look little booklet little notes I'm not going to decorate the back because i think that's enough decoration so there's one now this one the decoration has ended up on the back so I'm going to do something front. So I think because I've got a larger area, I'll use one of these photographs. <clears throat> um, anyway, and I had, I think about four of them, did around my craft area, and I used to store my papers, etc. in them. Well, as tends to happen when you're a bit addicted to a craft, they very quickly became not big enough or not enough and I needed more storage so I have recently purchased these let me show you you see these so it's like a clear plastic drawer uh, I don't know how big it is it's about 10 inches by about 6 inches something like that they're actually shoe boxes and they come with an outer case so it's a drawer um, and I'm not quite sure because I think there were various sets but I bought a set of 20 and what I've basically done is I've done them sort of five high and they all snap together to make like a proper sort of bookcase drawer unit thing done them sort of five high by four wide and I have found that it does actually keep me tidier and it makes my job easier because in the same way, look, I just pull out the lace drawer because I'm working with lace. 
or if I'm doing a lot of stamping, I'll just pull out not my stamp drawer because my stamp drawer is actually three drawers, but I pull out my ink drawer and I wait. Ah, oh, see, now I'm talking, I didn't put any cheesecloth on there. Let's just get a little bit of cheesecloth down there first. Um, and I've just found they're really awesome. Now, I have to be honest and say it wasn't totally my idea because Carol Tinson over on Crafty Design Emporium, I believe her channel is called. She's got a Facebook page and a YouTube channel. She was actually the very first person I started watching when I started doing journaling. Got some great inspiration from her and the various members of her group. So if you're looking for a new place for inspiration, go over and see Carol. She's got some great YouTube videos and a few series. Um, and I believe at the moment she's doing one called Rock Your Journal. So if you want to hunt that out, you'll find her. Anyway, she had put a thing in her Facebook group about... Do you want lace on that one? I think because it's man... When it's manly, pardon the pun, I always struggle about whether or not one should use lace. One, I'll cut me out, sandal posh. Um, <clears throat> let's at least go for some creamy white so it doesn't look so bad. There we go. Um, she put a thing up on her Facebook group about how she bought these wonderful cardboard boxes shoe boxes in exactly the same sort of way but they were cardboard i believe rather than these plastic ones and she'd bought them on amazon and she'd kindly put a link for people that were interested to go along and have a look well she sort of did too good a job really because by the time I got there to have a look, which was only about two days later, yep, yeah, you guessed it, they were sold out. There was none to be had. So, having then had the idea that that's what I was going to do and that would work brilliantly, I had to go on a mission to find some more. And what Carol had unwittingly done is they'd sold out from her link and somebody had obviously been watching because then everywhere else you could find them they were actually twice the price that they'd originally been on her link yeah naughty sellers wise sellers you know hard times whatever but anyway that was the situation so what i did was i took myself off of amazon and onto eBay because I tend to be more of an eBay shopper than an Amazon one. And <clears throat> hey presto, I found my plastic ones. And if anybody's interested, um, I will try and put a link because they are really, really handy. And they're amazingly sturdy. But more importantly, I bought a set of 20. Wait for it. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. For the exorbitant price of nineteen ninety nine with free postage. So they basically cost a pound box. Now they do come flat pack and it is a bit of a mission putting them together, I'll be honest. But Hubby and I sat down one Sunday with a film and just went for it. I did all the trays, he did all the outers, bish bosh, job done, very pleased. So there you go, I will share that um, in a link under the video if anybody wants to pop along and have a look at them. Um, I'm hoping that when I get there I don't find the problem that we had with Carol. Carol's link in that uh, they've all uh, become quite expensive now. So I've done them two. I'm just doing another one now. Uh, now this one is 
that's quite a copy. I had four on the page, you saw. Um, just of old postcards that I've got. Now, I have in the past copied the front and copied the back, stuck them together so you do get, you know, both sides if you want. But nine times out of ten, I am actually doing something like this, which means I'm sticking them down. So it's not really relevant. Right, I think what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to put some cheesecloth underneath the postcard because, as you can see, the postcard is a bit short for the page. So I'm going to put the glue on the bottom of the page, like so, and I'm just going to grab some cheesecloth. Um, a number of you have been asking me about my cheesecloth. I did put a link in um, the bottom of one of the videos but I'm learning that you ladies like all the details so I've started compiling a list of bits I need to put at the bottom of the videos um, about my cheesecloth somebody asked about my photos the photo kit now, I have to tell you that I have been in search of the original photo kit that you've seen me use a lot. The one where it, um, it's got that lady with that lovely hat. And it would appear that sadly that set has actually now been discontinued. Um, so, I did go on the hunt. And I did find another one. Um, bought it on Etsy. Just as a digital kit. Um, site's owned by a lovely man called Dean. Don't know him personally. But he did send me the most delightful message. To say thank you for the purchase of the kit. Um, so I have <coughs> added that to that list of information. That I need to put. Um, lots of you have asked me obviously about my print stick. I can't think what else at the moment, but as these questions come up, I will build that information. And it does obviously mean that the wordy area at the bottom of the videos will gradually get longer and longer. But what can one do? If you want the information, happy to share it. And it's going to take up space <laughs> but it will be down there okay so that's that one okay like the postcard what do i want on it can we get another another photo you see i'm just a little bit am i not hmm. i think those photos might be a bit big let's try let's Cut him off there. So as you can see, it's no, you know, nothing really difficult here today. Mind you, I don't do difficult things. I, I want crafting to be fun. I don't want it to be a headache. I don't want it to be like hard work. So I just want nice, easy quick little projects there we go so we put him on there right so okay I'm just trying to decide whether I want something on the back or whether I am just going to keep that for another one. Ooh, what about some of this ledger paper? Have a look at this. Also, I think very often when you put things together, so for example, this man and this ledger paper, it's sort of an indication of their job of work or their interest. It's a bit like when you put somebody with 
a musical instrument. I just think it's sort of I'm going to put that on there, but I'm going to take a little bit off of that side because I want it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to put that on there like that. Okay. I'm not going to put any lace on this one because we've got the cheesecloth underneath. So there you go really quick and simple little projects this morning that you can use up book pages for and the tiniest pieces of scraps you can use for this there we go so what have we got today we have got Three little booklets, all with writing space, that came from bits of scraps and this page that you can get from the Facebook group, like that. So, I'm not going to take up any more of your time because I know you're desperate to get off now and do some crafting. And I'm just going to stay here and make some more while video uploads for you to watch. So as always, thank you for being here. Stay safe. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.